Good morning, good afternoon, uh, everybody around the world for the uh, August installment of the TIPCO Analytics Meetup uh, from the TIPCO Data Science team. Uh, the standard confidential, confidentiality and disclaimer slide. Um, and I'm joined today, it's Michael O'Connell here speaking, uh, Chief Analytics Officer at TIPCO. I'm joined today by Helene Snelting, uh, Director of Data Science at TIPCO, and Ian Pastel, a Principal Data Scientist at TIPCO. We're going to give you an update on our hyper-converged analytics with a focus on uh, TIPCO Data Science. And we're going to give you a demo of the new TIPCO Data Science Team Studio 6.6 uh, release and open it up uh, for questions. Okay, so in terms of just uh, an update on, uh, on what is uh, hyper-converged analytics and uh, how does data science play a role in this? So Gartner, the leading analyst firm, has been talking about this collision of data and analytics and multiple areas are colliding. Um, you know, analytics and BI are colliding with data science and machine learning. Uh, data is colliding with analytics. And this collision is the, the different people are starting to work on both these things at once. Um, and so you see this diagram over here, um, analytics and BI on the left, data science, machine learning in the right. And this is being fueled this collision by augmented analytics that Gartner calls uh, those uh, like uh, suggestions and uh, auto ML and uh, things that the software is doing for you and suggesting to you um, things to do uh, in terms of data cleaning, data management, data preparation, um, machine learning, uh, visual analytics, uh, and the citizen roles that uh, fueling this are being are colliding with the traditional roles of data scientist and, and uh, application developer and, and uh, data governance is colliding with data management. So this whole world of data and analytics uh, are starting to collide as people just want to get their stuff done, it's fueled by all the pandemic. How do we go faster? Um, and so we are talking about uh, this in, and calling it uh, hyper-converged analytics. Uh, and this starts off with accessing your data uh, getting human insight from looking at your data, uh, then automating some of that, uh, you know, to take new data sources, uh, doing machine learning uh, to automate some of that and going around this loop to create solutions in these, for example, here's some manufacturing type solutions on yield management, predictive maintenance, process control, anomaly detection, inventory management. These are solutions that come together with these four uh, elements. Uh, and you know, our connected intelligence portfolio at TIPCO uh, includes uh, these, these elements. And so we are able to take events as they arrive. We're able to integrate those events. We're able to accumulate those data into databases. We're able to train models and do visual analytics on those data that are coming in at those different rates and set up analyses for users to consume those at many different uh, frequencies. Uh, and so that's connected intelligence. We're able to get, uh, messaging data, put it into the event stream, put it into at rest systems, you know, visualize and analyze that in Spotfire, and then bring in data science as a way to you know, learn and automate uh, some of the patterns that we recognize uh, for future consumption. So uh, going from data acquisition on the left to storage, to analysis and to serving that up and using all of the data sources that are out there, you know, data virtualization has more than 300 connectors into cloud and non-cloud sources and we're able to model those uh, with TIPCO Data Science and visualize those in Spotfire. So those three products are in focus in, this, in today's webinar from DV to Data Science to Spotfire. Uh, and uh, you see how we've layered now that data virtualization, Spotfire, TIPCO Streaming, and TIPCO Data Science onto this hyper-converged loop. And I'm now giving you some examples on the customer analytics side for segmentation and next best offer and uh, affinity analysis, market basket, cross-sell, upsell, these are the sorts of solutions that you can put in place with these, uh, these components and this hyper-converged analytics um, framework. So we're going to show you today TIPCO Data Science and Spotfire and how they merge together in this, uh, in this environment. You see inside of this TIPCO Data Science workspace here, I've got a Spotfire developer creating a Spotfire dashboard. I've got a citizen data scientist creating a drag and drop data science workflow. I've got a coding data scientist creating a Python notebook. You can drag these onto this canvas and everything is now merged and hyper-converged and you can get visual analytics and data science, you know, against all kinds of data sources with coding and non-coding uh, interfaces. So it's a pretty cool uh, world that we live in right now to do this kind of stuff. And you, it's kind of seamless to you. You just drag and drop operators onto this canvas. And in the background, we're pushing SQL, for example, down to S3 or cloud storage, uh, pushing computations into Spark. We're 
evaluating models. We're putting models out on the event stream or batch jobs. And, you know, all of this is a, in a convenient interface and we're taking care in the, in the background what's going on. And uh, uh, you can be innovating some team, innovating in Spotfire, another team innovating in Tico Data Science Team Studio, uh, and you can get the best of both worlds. So you can have a Spotfire person, say on a manufacturing floor, call into a Team Studio workflow that a data scientist team is, is, has been innovating on and get the benefit of that right there on the manufacturing floor or right there on the marketing uh, website. Uh, this combination of Spotfire and Team Studio is pretty powerful. So here's an example from the life sciences where this uh, uh, partner company of ours, Perkin Elmer, has got data on uh, literally millions of molecular states of uh, different people. Uh, also got data on environment, uh, observational data, smoking, uh, you know, various exposures and so on, and putting all those together to estimate the risk factor for getting certain conditions like cancer and so on. And we're able to you know, create that sophisticated uh, machine learning model you know, out of the box in TIBCO data science, but we can configure it to be run from Spotfire so that certain results are brought back and certain visuals are displayed. So then you can quickly go through these combinations of uh, genotype and environment and see the survival curves. The, 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 these are the Kaplan-Meier curves that show you the difference between survival in, the, in one group versus another group, different cohorts that you're comparing. Uh, and so this combination of TIBCO data science to do the heavy lifting the calculations on you know, very big data uh, and then Spotfire to interactively display the results is just a you know, match made in, made in heaven. And we can see how we've sped up the compute on the data science side and we're getting these very uh, consumable graphics showing the different risks and cl clinical survival curves and so on in, in Spotfire. So that combination of Spotfire calling into Team Studio for both the point and click citizen data science workflows and the coding notebook workflows and being able to ML engineers are able to, you know, create additions and extensions to the, to the nodes uh, on the canvas, uh, allows you to have a business analyst and a data scientist and a citizen data scientist and a data engineer and an ML engineer, all working in this same, in this same world, and then pushing out to DevOps to get this deployed, uh, you know, into an automated uh, operational system. Uh, so this is really what the, the, co the co collision and collaboration that Gartner is describing put into the context of our TIBCO uh, products here. And this uh, also allows you to access cloud services. You know, the cloud vendors have got a lot of cool uh, routines for doing image recognition, video, uh, analyzing language and uh, speech and, uh, and so on. Uh, and we can call into those services from our data science notebook or our Spotfire uh, Python data function uh, to call into AWS or Azure or, or, or GCP to bring those services into the, into the fray. So that allows us to go through this life cycle of acquiring data and blending data and getting features and building models and refining models and deploying them and monitoring them and refreshing them. This is that the data science life cycle that we all know and love. And we've been uh, you know, writing about uh, that um, with respect to model ops, how to manage the uh, models in production. And if you look at the full vision of our hyperconverged analytics lifecycle, as we're about to, to release a new uh, offering in the model ops area, uh, combining data virtualization to get to the data, data science to model the data, uh, model ops to manage it, uh, Spotfire to, uh, to put the models into um, you know, real-time usage uh, and batch usage. That's what we're, uh, we're talking about here. And we're pretty excited to have these products to be able to pull together like this. And uh, now I'm going to hand off to Ian to talk you through uh, the team, the new release of Team Studio 6.6 that you know continues this hyperconverged uh, narrative by opening up uh, Tibco data virtualization and all of its data sources uh, to bring into this world. So Ian, can you uh, tell us a little bit about this new 6.6 release and show us what's going on? Certainly, Michael. Thanks very much uh, for the introduction and. Um, so yeah, this is the new 6.6 release, which really builds upon the existing infrastructure we had on the, the 6.5 release. Um, so as Michael has explained, Team Studio itself is a way of building data science workflows that can either be used for things like data prep, model construction, model scoring, and use as a drag and drop interface. And obviously all that has to work against data. And one of the big things that we've added in this new 6.6 release is the capability to connect up to TIPCO data virtualization. And what data virtualization allows you to do is to connect to a wide variety of different data sources and very disparate data sources. 
So this is not just relational databases, but it can be things like cloud sources, it can be cloud databases, it can be cloud storage, like for example, Amazon S3, you know, cloud databases like Snowflake, even applications like SAP. So in DV, we've got something like 350 different adapters that can connect to a wide variety of data sources, and they all become essentially virtual tables inside of DV, and which Team Studio can access and query any of that data. One important thing about uh, TIBCO data science has always been its ability to push the compute down into the sources where the data you know, resides. And that way we don't have to move large amounts of data into memory so we can do this processing with very, very large data sets. And data virtualization itself continues that trend in that it is trying to aim to push that data or those requests rather all the way to the back end data sources. So it means that we can have very large amounts of data sitting in, in, in Amazon S3 or in Snowflake, which we can run these various analytics queries against. We also have the ability to write data back through DV. So we can actually create a new data set inside of Team Studio and actually push it all the way again to the back end systems. Now, there are some things that we can't push uh, to the back end, which is really the machine learning parts. And this is where we have started to leverage the Spark infrastructure. So again, this is a big change in the 6.6 release. Previously with our 6.5 version of the product, there was a high dependency on using Hadoop as the processing engine. The thing is we're seeing Hadoop less in the marketplace now, and I think it's being regarded as getting a little bit of an old technology. Whereas Spark is now evolving and there's various cloud offerings around Spark, for example, Amazon EMR, and also Databricks, Cloudera, all offering you know, big Spark environments. And we can now connect to any of those Spark environments for the part of the ML part of this process. And if the data resides inside of the Spark system, all the data is processed inside of Spark. If the data is coming from outside of Spark, for example, it may be sitting in another relational database, we push the connection of DV into the Spark system so it can pull all that data that we get uh, from DV and process it inside the Spark environment. So the marriage of these two worlds gives us a very, very powerful environment for processing large amounts of data wherever it resides. So let me show you this in practice. So this is the uh, Team Studio uh, interface, which is a, a web-based interface. And we've got various things in here where we can see, for example, collaboration around the system. Um, the first thing here is obviously connecting to data. And where, you know, before we have connection to different systems, we've now primarily added this data virtualization connection. As I mentioned, data virtualization, it kind of allows us to connect to a wide variety of different data sources. And so you can see here that we've, broken these data sources into in schemas so, so that we're just identifying where the data is coming from. But you can see I've got data coming here from Amazon S3, I've got data coming from Cloudera, I've got data coming from my local file system, I've got data coming from Snowflake. And although this data is sitting in a variety of different sources in multiple different locations, this is giving us a single view of that data by which we can process it. So I'm going to take an example data set here. I've got some data around high tech manufacturing and you know, we've got information going through a system in lots of processes going through a production line. And we've got the manufacturing records for those. We've got information about the products and some test data. Now I'm going to, because essentially, although this data in this case is actually coming from Amazon S3 and sitting inside of a bucket, here we're just seeing it like it's a virtual table. And so for the inside of Team Studio, I can simply preview some of that data and see what it looks like. I can also you know, visualize some of this data as well. Uh, so for example, let's take a look at the uh, quantity in for all the lots. So again, we can create a simple visualization and see that data. Now, once we've got data, what we can now do is build analytic workflows against it. And we collect the workflows in workspaces. A workspace essentially is a collection of different uh, files, uh, most of which are either notebooks uh, in, for processing in Python or workflows for processing in Spark. So in this case, I've got an initial workflow here, which is around data preparation. So in this case, 
I'm connecting to those data sources that we saw earlier, and I can get to those data sources here and simply you know, drag and drop those objects onto the panel here. I've done this for yeah, three of the tables. And if I click down below here, we can see a little summary of that data. So I'm taking the manufacturing record and I'm extending the set with data coming from the lot, extending it again by data coming from the product, give me an overall data set. Now we can now run some analytics against this. So for example, I'm now looking at the, the data, for example, looking at the number of distinct values against the data, number of nulls, the data distribution, the centiles, et cetera. So this may be, for example, maybe help me to identify categorical variables or what variables may be useful in, in further analysis. The other thing we can do here is we can create new data sets. And what we've got here is a data set that I've created. What I'll do is I maybe want to create a similar data set around yield. So as Michael explained earlier, we simply do this by dragging and dropping the icons onto the panel. The icons down the left-hand side here are all different operators and they can be used for performing various different tasks. So we have some operators around data preparation, transformation, sampling of data, model creation. And we have some that are related to this new DV function. This is the ML piece that is pushed to Spark. So you can see here that I've uh, added an operator here, which is actually a variable operator, which helps me to create additional uh, new columns to the data. So if I open this up here, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a new field here called yield. I'm going to specify its data type. And I can simply specify in here the calculation that I'm going to use for generating the yield calculation. So I just copy that again. There we go. I may also want to pass through some of the other columns that we have from the existing data set as part of this new data set that I'm creating. And then we have the ability to define how this data set is going to get created. I can either create it as a table. As I mentioned earlier, DV has the ability to pass that through to a nominated database. So that could end up as a table in you know, Snowflake or in Postgres or Green Palm or any other data source. Or what I can do is create a view, in which case the view will get created inside of data virtualization itself, which means it gets processed on the fly as we query the data. I can tell it where to create that particular data set. I'm going to create it in the same place as the others. And we also generate names for tables. But in this case, I want to use this table elsewhere. So I'm going to give it a particular name. So if I just uh, say this, and let me just clear this step down here. And what I'm going to do is just run this workflow. Now, part of this workflow is already run and those steps step through. Now, these two steps are now executed and essentially are creating two new data sets. Let me just complete that. And if I go back to the data here and now refresh this, what we see is these two new data sets being created. So these are actually new data sets that have actually been created in the DV platform and are now visible from Team Studio and were created as a result of running this workflow. Now it's quite significant the fact these are created in data virtualization because this, this really plays into the whole hyperconverged analytics story. Because now I can, for example, go into uh, Spotfire and I'm also connected Spotfire to the same data virtualization instance. And here you can see those two tables that we just created by running that workflow and the data is accessible. So here I'm now visualizing that same data now in Spotfire, and you can see I've got you know, the yield broken down here by the steps and the, and this, and this, and the um, production lines. I can do the usual brush analytics, see a set of, of the data. Here I've got a heat map, and for example, you know, here is a yield that is particularly low. I can take a look at this and I can see instantly that it's the same device, it's the same packaging, but different state and the same pro part of the process but they're different production lines. And so, you know, I've now done some data prep, visually analyzed it, and maybe that's now telling me that I want to do a calculation on yield based upon, you know, the device and also the, the um, particular lot. So if we go back into Team Studio, we can do exactly that. If I close this down, go to another workflow, um, I've got a workflow here around creating uh, a set of models. And essentially what we're doing is we're creating, we're taking the data sets that we had just built, the yield data set, 
and I'm doing the usual train uh, test split to generate a training uh, data set and, and a testing data set. And here I'm trying to use three different models to do a regression calculation to try and estimate the um, yield based upon two factors. And you know, if I click on any of these nodes again, I can see the data, I can see the data of my training set, sorry, my test set rather, and I can see the output of the model execution. So for example, you know, the variable importance, um, summary of the training, and these, this is obviously very different depending on the model that I'm looking at. We can then use those models to try and predict an additional column. So here you can see these, we've got three predictions of yield uh, based upon these input parameters and comparing against the actual values of yields. And we can do an evaluation of the model to see you know, which model we believe is best. Now, once you've built those models and you know, we've selected a model that we want to use, uh, here this export function allows us to export the model. And this means that we can take this model and we can run it in different ways. You know, we could take it and run it in another Spark system. We can run it in Tipico streaming to handle real-time data as it's coming through the system. But we can also feed it in, back into Team Studio itself. So in this case, I've got one final workflow here, which is doing exactly that which is taking this model that we've just built and it's now uh, taking uh, again a yield data set um, and we're taking the model and we're selecting a subset of the overall lots and it's, this is actually being done by using a parameter. So if I go and actually look at the definition of this filter, you'll see that I'm using this value at lot. And this is a variable that we've created for this workflow, which means every time we run this workflow, we can supply a different value, which will filter the data down for an individual lot. And then we're then running the model against that filtered data just to produce a smaller result set. So you can see here that I've just picked a particular lot, and this is the predicted yield against the actual yield uh, based upon the model that we've selected. Now, the reason for doing that variable um, preparation means that we can call this workflow from external places. And one of the places we can call that from is Spotfire. We have a capability in Spotfire called the big data function, which allows us to call these workflows inside of uh, Spotfire itself, where I can pass in the lot based upon, you know, we selected in Spotfire and it will execute this workflow. So hopefully you've seen you know, what we can do with the new 6.6 release in terms of being able to connect a wide variety of different data through DV to take that data and do data prep and push it back through DV for consumption in other analytics tools, including Spotfire, and also then to build models on that uh, to create a scoring workflow, which we can invoke from outside applications again, like Spotfire. Michael, back over to you. Brilliant. Great demo, Ian. I love the way we can um, basically put the same view underneath um, Team Studio and Spotfire to you know, go back and forth between the two. And how what um, what you do in Team Studio to update those views is instantly you know, accessible um, by Spotfire. So that back and forth really is part of the, the whole hyper-converged narrative. And you can have one, one set of people innovating on that Spotfire dashboard that you that you uh, showed there, and you can have a different set of people innovating on the data science workflow, and uh, immediately get the results of data science into the world of Spotfire. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, so let's turn it over to Helene to give us an update on the on the community and take uh, some Q and A. Great. Yeah, thanks for the demo, Ian. Um, so um, the next part is just a quick refresher on uh, what's available in the community. We uh, we try to. Um, Make sure that you're up to date on what we're posting there and that you're aware that uh, the TIPCO community exists. Um, we also create a newsletter, so we'd like to invite everyone to sign up for this newsletter. Uh, we send it out only quarterly um, and it always includes the invite to this quarterly meetup. So that way you always stay up to date if you just want uh, quarterly updates. And um, so you can uh, you can contact us there. Uh, you can also email if you're new to TIPCO to ask data science at tipco.com and we'll uh, we'll answer any questions that you have. And this is not so junk mail, everybody. This is just once a quarter, and it's like you're not getting anything else. It's not going to fill up your email email box. It's just to invite an update from us once a quarter. Yeah, 
and you can always unsubscribe if uh, if you don't like it. But we uh, we think it's it's these are valuable updates. Um, so on the TIPCO community, um, we have a few resources that will help you uh, familiarize with um, uh, Team Studio. Um, and we wanted to point those out to you. So um, the community is accessible to everyone. Um, you just need to uh, to register once to be able to download all of the resources that are up uh, on the community, but you can actually access all of the content even without registering. But if you're new to the community, you'll, have, you'll get an uh, invitation to register, it takes two minutes, and then uh, all this information is accessible to you. So you're probably familiar with the what's new pages on the typical community for Spotfire or other products. I just wanted to make sure you know that there is a uh, Team Studio page as well. So every time that we release a new version, you'll find the latest information here with links to the documentation. And um, in this case, um, sort of the relevant uh, content um, that is available on the typical community exchange, which is just a section, sort of a marketplace within the community where you can find these integration mods that um, Ian Pastel uh, just uh, demoed to us. So um, if you can, um, uh, if you're, um, uh, if you've registered for the community, you can download these um, uh, for free uh, and use those in the product. And um, there's a few sections to this um, where, you know, this is obviously very new. So we look forward to getting some reviews and, and comments from uh, the users. And um, there's reference info available that sort of goes step by step uh, through the detail of how to use these, uh, these mods. Uh, so hopefully you'll find that information useful. And if you have any feedback, uh, we look forward to hearing that. Um, so the other thing um, I wanted to show is that there's also actually I can uh, yeah I can show this from here and there's also um, the exchange overall um, is important that you um, maybe check out all of the um, components that are available for Team Studio. So if you select Team Studio or any other product that you're interested in, then you only see those um, extensions that are available for you to use with the product. So there are a lot more um, operators or mods for Team Studio that you have access to as well. Um, and the final thing on the community I wanted to show was the enablement hub. So we've got lots of different enablement hubs for our different products, as you can see, but um, the one I wanted to point out is the Team Studio enablement hub. So our team and others um, uh, provide quite a few videos and instructions here um, for you to learn more and um, especially if you're a new, a new starter on Team Studio, how to use the products with nice short videos. Um, also invitations to other uh, webinars like the Dr. Data, Data Science series and this Tipco Analytics Meetup to learn more. So that's all available to you. Um, the other thing I wanted to point out is that there's a website for hyperconverged analytics. So I won't go into detail now, but um, this is where you can download um, the, the Gardner and Forrester reports that are in line with hyperconverged analytics and explain the dynamics that Michael um, showed. Um, and this is also where we'll update the latest resources, resources on our typical website. So that brings us um, to the discussion. I'm going to um, stop sharing my screen so we can uh, look at the Q&A and the chat and see what questions we've received. Um, and Ian, if you can also come back on camera, then we can, uh, we can try to answer the questions that um, the attendees have for us. Um, so let me just take a look here at the questions in the chat. It's a uh, healthy audience today. Thanks everybody for coming along. I see some uh, familiar names. Uh, up there, uh, feel free to push push out some questions to us. Yeah, um, I've got a first question for you, Ian, and that is um, uh, if you already have some tangible results from the launch of 6.6, um, you know, looking at either testing or deployment of, uh, of the new product. Um, yes, yeah, certainly there is some, some early interest in the new 6.6 um, release and actually, you know, there were some custom interactions that we already had, which kind of drove the, the, the shape of what the 6.6 release was. Um, in particular, we have one customer, again, around high-tech manufacturing that um, really had a large investment going forward in Spark and really wanted to leverage that. And with this previous release, that would mean they would need a whole new infrastructure around um, Hadoop, which they didn't want to have because they didn't have the expertise and also they see it as an older technology. So, you know, part of the rationale of actually using the Spark as a way of doing the, the machine learning piece uh, was very much driven by that and we're seeing that echoed by a number of different customers. Um, probably the biggest thing though, I think would say with this particular release is because of the new connectivity, 
you know, uh, this is now enabling us to connect to a lot more cloud data sources. And we're seeing a lot more people putting their data, particularly in you know, the cheaper cloud storage, whether that be you know, Amazon S3 or ADLS. The fact that now that we can leverage that data at scale uh, with the platform, I think is um, something where we're seeing very significant feedback and interest from customers. Yeah, yeah and just to add on to that, we've seen some of our life science customers also uh, with combinations of uh, S3 with uh, Snowflake um, generating quite a bit of interest. So, uh, so yeah, the, the opening up the new connectors to cloud and non-cloud sources has been uh, is keeping us busy with uh, with new opportunities and new customers. So that's for sure. I see a and question come into the the, the chat, Helene. Uh, and, uh, oh, it's, yes. Sorry, I was just looking at. I've got another question for for Ian in the meantime as well. Um, because in terms of um, the integration with TDV, do you think um, it's easier now to sort of stay up to date with other new data sources that? are getting used as well, maybe ones that we don't know about yet today. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a continual process of adding new connectors. And now by leveraging the, the DV um, product, that means that we can exploit everything that they do. And DV itself has a number of built-in adapters, but there's also a, a rich community of adapters being developed by, um, we have a partner, C Data, and they are constantly producing new uh, adapters and new adapters for new versions of databases, which is continually updated and available to anyone that uses the DV product. So, um, yeah, I mean, this means that we, you know, have connectivity to all the new sources of data that are appearing, and that's continuous being updated and uh, uh, modified. And so, we can exploit that by using the DV as the data access mechanism. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, and thanks, Michael, for pointing out. Uh, there's a question in the in the chat. Uh, we're a small company that needs help building out functionality in Spotfire, and we do not have the capabilities internally. Um, what is the best way uh, to find someone to help? So I would really recommend um, you contact us. Um, if you already know us, um, contact your TIPCO contact. If not, uh, ask data science at tipco.com. Um, because we can put you in contact with one of our partners or one or our professional services team to uh, to scope out what you need to give you some, you know, cost options and uh, and and you know sort of show you what's possible. So uh, don't uh, don't be shy. Um, we and was it ask uh, data science at tipco.com, right, Helen? Ask data science at tipco.com. Yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's it. Um, and. Um, uh, I was actually, I have a question for you, Michael, as well, um, and that's about um, sort of the, the model update, because you talked about the end-to-end -end process. Can you talk a little bit about the model updating process, how fre frequently that needs to happen, and how sort of real-time results come into play? Oh, yeah, for sure. So uh, model monitoring, we didn't get into that in any detail, but uh, the idea is that, uh, and we have a, a new model ops project uh, product coming out in this area. But the idea is to track the features and the, uh, and the target variables um, and to track those um, over time uh, and monitor the drift that we, we call it. So if you see the different feature variables as they change over time and you're tracking those in, in a Spotfire dashboard uh, and you're tracking the predictions of the target over time, when you see those start to drift, then that's a good um, you know, reminder to go and uh, kick off a process and understand uh, if you might want to need to update your model. And that also can be run from Spotfire where, um, you know, Spotfire has a, a headless version. We call it automation services where you can poll those uh, responses that you're getting or the, uh, the changes in the target variable and the features, and you can trigger a job that will go and get um, the latest um, data and the latest model uh, and do a model retraining exercise and champion challenger essentially uh, that you can then see um, okay, is the drift um, affecting the model predictions? Uh, what does it look like if we if we were to retrain? Uh, what is the com comparison of the the, the the current champion versus the challenger? You can see all that uh, get surfaced. You can create your own Spotify template for that or take our template uh, to look at the different measures of, um, of model drift and then decide um, quantitatively, um, is it worthwhile to, to do a retraining and a, and a redeployment? So that can all be automated on a loop and on a trigger um, uh, and, and that sort of monitoring of drift and retraining and recalibrating is something that we can show you how to do and we can automate through uh, the combination of Team Studio and, and Spotfire. Thank you. I think I'm gonna go back uh, and, and wrap up the session. I'm just looking at the time, we're a few minutes over. Um, I've just posted the, um, uh, the contact email in the chat. Um, 
you can also contact us there if you're new to Team Studio and you would like to give it a try. So um, I just have um, one slide that I would like to um, finish up with um, for TIPCO now. Let me just share my uh, screen. Because uh, TIPCO now is coming up already. Um, and uh, that's September 27th through the 30th. It's our big annual user conference covering all of our products. It has two free days um, this time uh, with also three premium tracks for the different uh, products um, port or the product pillars uh, with lots of customer uh, breakout sessions, training, um, great keynote speakers. So the agenda is already up to date on the website. So if you go to now.tipco.com, you can look at all the speakers, all the sessions, and uh, hopefully we'll see you there. Uh, if you have any questions, just get in touch and, uh, and ask us uh, to give you a little bit of a tour of everything that could be of interest to you. So I think uh, I'd like to thank uh, Ian and Michael for uh, the presentation and the demo and uh, everyone for their questions and for attending. And if you sign up for the newsletter, uh, we, uh, we look forward to seeing you next uh, quarter again uh, as well in the Tivco Analytics Meetup. Have a great day, everyone.